Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on understanding the expected value in chi-square using Excel and SPSS. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here output that I've copied, pasted into Excel, and this output is from SPSS. It's from a cross tabulation and I'm going to move back to SPSS and demonstrate how I generated this output. So moving over to SPSS, I have fictitious data here. I have a treatment variable and a functioning variable. Both these variables record data at the nominal level of measurement. The treatment variable, I have three levels, rational emotive behavior therapy, existential therapy, and psychodynamic therapy. On the functioning variable, I have three levels, low, moderate, and high. So let's assume that we had participants randomly assigned to one of these three treatment conditions, and we had some measure of functioning that returns just low, moderate, or high. This research design and these data lend themselves to a chi-square. I'll perform that chi-square analysis, descriptive statistics, and cross-tabs. This is the default dialog for cross-tabs. Now here, we're conceptualizing the treatment variable as causal. The treatment variable is causing the functioning variable. So I'll put treatment in rows and functioning under columns. Under statistics, I'm gonna check off the chi-square statistic. And under cells, the observed count is checked off in this frame in the top left by default. I'm gonna also check off the expected count. So this will produce the expected counts. And I'm also gonna show you how to calculate those counts using Excel. Press continue and then okay. So we have the case processing summary, 90 cases, none missing, the treatment times functioning cross tabulation. We have the count and the expected count for each combination of the levels of the independent variables. And then of course the results of the chi-square test. This particular chi-square is not statistically significant, 0 0.056. I've copied this treatment times functioning cross tabulation over to Excel. So I'm gonna move back to Excel. So th these are the same results, just copy and pasted into this Excel worksheet. So we have RBT, existential therapy, and psychodynamic therapy times this functioning variable, low, moderate, and high. So for each combination of the levels, we have a count and an expected count. So for RBT and low, there were 14 participants in that category. RBT and moderate, 12. RBT and high, six. And the same thing for psychodynamic and existential therapy. We also have the total row and total column. So here we have this expected count. And this is the value that we would expect to see in this combination of the levels of the independent variables. So we would expect 9.2, our actual count was 14. And chi-square looks at the difference between an observation, in this case, the count 14, and the expected, in this case, 9.2. So it's important we understand where these expected counts come from. How are they generated in a chi-square? So to understand this, we first have to understand the concept of cells in a contingency table. And that's what this cross tabulation is. This is a contingency table. And this particular one with a three by three has these nine counts plus the total counts. So I'll highlight these. So you have this count for REBT and existential therapy and psychodynamic therapy. And then these totals here, these row totals, 
at the bottom, and of course these column totals. Now the expected count for these values is fairly straightforward. It matches the actual count. So you can see here you know, the total count for this low level of functioning across all the levels of the independent variable treatment is 26 and our expected count is 26. Same thing for moderate and high and the same thing for the column for this total column over here to the right. We have a sum here of all these counts for REBT of 32 and that is the expected count as well. And then looking at the total sample size down here in the bottom right is 90 and that of course is the expected count. So the ones that are not intuitive would be the expected counts for each combination of levels like this 9.2 for the 14 count and the 13.9 for the 12 count. So I'm going to calculate these expected values over here to the right and I'm going to set this function up in a way so that I can autofill it to the right and autofill it down and it will give me the expected counts for all the other cells. So this is going to be a, the key function here is this first one. So this will be equal sign and I want to start with the row total for the cell in question. So in this particular case I'm looking at this expected count 9.2 REBT times low and that is going to start with the row total for that cell. So 9.2 is the expected count. I'm going to move up to the count which is 14 and then over to the row total and that's going to be 32. Now in this case I don't want the column to change as I autofill so I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the G, the column, but I'm not going to put a dollar sign in front of the row. So that means that the column is an absolute reference and the row remains a relative reference. So that's the row total. Now I'm going to use the asterisk, shift 8, because I want to multiply the row total by the column total again for that expected count for that cell, REBT times low, the 9.2. So again, move up here to 14. I'm looking at this column and the count for this column is 26. So that's going to be cell D10. And in this case, I do want the column to change, but not the row. So I'm going to put the dollar sign before the 10. So the row will be an absolute reference, and the column will remain a relative reference. This expression, row total times column total, I'm going to put this in parentheses. And then I'm going to divide this expression by the total sample size. And that's down here in the bottom right, 90. Now for this reference, I'm going to press the function 4 key, the F4 key. That's going to make this cell an absolute reference. It puts the dollar signs in with just one keystroke. I'll press enter. And this gives me 9.24. Now I've formatted these cells here to the right, so I have two places to the right of the decimal. SPSS I have configured just to have the one place to the right of the decimal. But just to show you the actual expected count, 9.24, when you use two decimal places. Of course, if you extend this out, there are more digits to the right of just these two decimal places. I can autofill this expected count all the way through the rest of the cross tabulation. So 2 to the right returns the correct expected values. I can autofill these values down as well. I don't want to create the values in the extra rows. So I'm just going to copy and paste these in the correct space. That's still going to work with the absolute relative references I have set up. So I have the expected values for existential therapy and for psychodynamic therapy. Now I mentioned before that for the totals it's fairly straightforward because it matches the count. It's important to note the calculation would 
work there as well though. So if I pasted the same formulas here in the expected count for total, it's going to return the correct values. And if I move over here to the right and I auto filled this J column to the right, it's going to give me the correct expected values for that column total as well. I hope you found this video on understanding expected values in Excel and SPSS to be useful. Thanks for watching.